Would you like to lose weight without dieting or going to the gym? Well, now you can with the new Ronco Vampire. Imported from Romania by cover of night, the new Ronco Vampire comes to you while you're sleeping and slurps from your jugular. I am in ecstasy, my pretty. Ah! 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 With the new Ronco Vampire, you can lose eight pints of blood in one sitting. Watch that weight fall off. Ooh, I feel lighter, trimmer, and a little anemic. You'll never fear stretch marks again with the Ronco Vampire. Made from 100% undead cadaver, this product is fully rechargeable. Just stick that plug up its ass and watch that sucker drink. Yes, Mina. I have traveled across oceans of time and night. <laughs> I am reborn! You oh, 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 Ronco oh, Vampire, oh, oh. coming to a store near you! The Ronco Vampire can't be fed garlic or left out in the sun. Don't take him to church or decapitate with a gravedigger's shovel. You may be sucked dry and turned into its undead bitch. Terms and conditions apply. The Life and Times of Osset Flushdyke. It's a bit like Jeeves and Worcester, but with a lot more jokes about ladies' knockers. Episode 2 is sponsored by the Ronco Vampire. Dorset Flashdike gripped the old man firmly. You oh, come on! You know the drill by now? <coughs> the old man in question was Osset's long lost uncle, Bruno Le Creme Flashdike, and my master was quick to welcome him with a manly hug. Osset hadn't seen his uncle since 1906, when Bruno was arrested for indecent exposure and fingered by the vicar. No! I mean the vicar picked him out of a police lineup. Can we just get on with it? <clears throat> but now it was... Hello? Y yes, thank you. But now it was September 1922, and Bruno had come to Osset with promises of riches beyond his wildest dreams. And so it was that Osset Flashdyke, Uncle Bruno, and I, Albert Jenkins, came to plan a daring trip to Egypt and the lost tomb of Humbaba. <laughs> I... May need a nurse to clean me. September 10th, 1922, and having fun rehashing old times with Jenkins and Uncle Bruno. Did you know Bruno and I went to school together, sir? I had no idea, Jenkins. How fascinating. We were a pair of scallywags, weren't we, Jenkins? Oh, to be a child again. Yes, playing truant, scrumping apples. Used to scrump apples all the time. Usually got me into hot water with the local bobby. He gave you a thick ear? No, he made me take baths with him. It's an unusual punishment, Uncle. He was an unusual man of it. I remember how when I was really naughty, he used to unbuckle his thick leather belt and make me spank him. Tea, sir? Please, Jenkins. May I have a cup? Of course you may. Sugar? No, just call me Bruno. So, tell us about this treasure map, Uncle. Brace yourself, Osset, for the treasure map is hidden here in Flush Dyke Manor! My word! But how can that be? It's a long story. Gramophone, Jenkins. Yes, sir. Years before you were born, Osset, your father Algernon went with his friend, the famous German archaeologist Rolf Wervenhofer on a dig near El Khaga in Egypt. How exciting. There they found a box containing an ancient map marking the secret location of the tomb of Khumbaba. My goodness! There's tea everywhere, Jenkins. You've heard of it, Jenkins? Khumbaba was a pharaoh. Many believe he had magical powers. He was an evil tyrant with, some say, the power to cheat death itself. When he was killed in 1247 BC... How did he die? Choked on a walnut. Right. The people were so fearful he would return from the dead, they filled his tomb with riches, the likes of which had never been seen. As bribery never to come back. That's right, Jenkins. But the tomb was cursed. Indeed. As Humbaba choked on the walnut, he was heard to utter a curse. Which was... 
bugger, I'm choking. Right. Vervan Herfer tried to find the tomb, but many of his crew died tragically. He called off the search, and Ossid, your father returned to Minor Swelling with the map. Look, how do you know all this? Oh, I was one of Vervan Herfer's closest friends. Here's a letter from him, which reads, Dear Bruno. You have always been good to me, and now I entrust this information to you. With Algernon dead, the treasure map forced to his son, Uthid. Please find the map, and for my sake, brave all the perils to find the tomb of Humbaba. I would come with you, but this is a suicide note. Goodbye. There's sound effects in the envelope. Careful, sir. It's loaded. So what's in it for me, Bruno? Off it, I'm skint, and I'm asking you to sponsor the trip. We can split the proceeds down the middle. Right, so it looks like... I haven't finished yet. Sorry, aren't you dead? Nein, just mortally wounded. There is one more thing to tell you. The tomb of Humbaba has many booby traps, which will surely kill you, unless you seek out Bathsheba. Who the dickens is Bathsheba? Seek Bathsheba in Cafe Abdullah El Kaga. I can tell you it no more. Why not? It's still a suicide note. Goodbye. Are you dead now? Oh, yeah. Good. So, it looks like there's a treasure map in the manor and a trip to Egypt to plan. Jenkins. Sir? Let's get the balls in motion. Of course, sir. But you seem to be getting a bit mixed up. Now, you can get your balls rolling and your wheels in motion, but I'm afraid you can't get your balls in motion. I can't get my balls in motion. Well, you can, sir, but generally only in private and never in polite company. I see, but it's OK to roll my balls. Yes, sir. Once a month between your thumb and forefinger and tell the doctor if they feel funny. Thanks, Jenkins. I think I've got it. Shall we? Let's. September 12, 1922, and after two days of fruitless searching, we find ourselves rummaging through Father's study. We've already looked here, sir. Then we need to look again, Jenkins. Do you know what this treasure could do for me? Power, privilege, the ladies will be like a potty in my hands. Don't you mean potty, sir? No, I mean potty. It's just I have to carry one round at the moment. As you wish, uh, sir. So, yes, we need to look in that cupboard over there. Have you seen that odd-shaped chest? The old leather trunk? Uncle Bruno's man breasts. Very impressive. They're really very perky. <laughs> Opening the trunk now, sir. Oh, jolly good. My word, the dust in here. Are you sure we've not looked in this trunk before? I thought you had, sir. And I thought you had. And I've been in the bathroom for two days. Thanks for that, Uncle. Then I do believe, sir, that this may be it. Careful, Jenkins. It's yellowy and ancient. Unroll it, Jenkins. Let's have a closer look. What is it, you think? It's a... It's a treasure map, sir. Somebody shut that cupboard, please. Oh, my gosh! Who took that photo? Hello. <gasps> Pancho! He's photographed the map! He's getting away, sir! Grab his cowboy boots! Grab his cowboy boots! Escaped, sir. Damn it, Jenkins. Who was driving? It all happened so quickly, sir. Yes, and now Pancho has a copy of the treasure map. I knew he couldn't be trusted to stay on the straight and narrow. And he's never really been on the straight, sir. Confound that evil, gay Mexican dwarf. Why didn't he just take the map? We interrupted him, sir. Oh, my God! Arthur! It's Uncle Bruno! He's in trouble! Back to the study! And so it was that the full horror of Pancho's intrusion became apparent on inspecting the cupboard in the study. Oh, my God. He's been naked in here. How perfectly horrid, sir. Jenkins. Sir? Book us on the boat to Egypt. Very good, sir. And I'll ask Uncle Bruno to put his pants back on. Jolly well done, sir. Osset Flushdyke starred Simon Carter as Osset, Gideon Clear as Jenkins and Pancho, Bob Sinfield as Uncle Bruno, and Andrew Jordan as Ralph Werfenhofer. The Ronco Vampire featured Gideon Clear, Lindsay Frost, Redan Sheridan, and Bob Sinfield. Osset, written by Simon Carter and produced by David Lucas, featured the music of Rob Vandenberg, Julia Eklar, Dry Glass Mayor, David Kempers, Paul and Jeff Vidov, care of musicalley.com. For all the latest nonsense, visit ossetflushdyke.co.uk or follow me on Twitter at ossetflushdyke. That's osset, O double S E double T, flush as in lavatory, dyke as in woman with comfortable shoes. 
And now, playing us out, Mr. Pete Gold, care of petergold.co.uk. Jolly well done. Oh, it's difficult to be a modern bloke. I don't drink too much and try hard not to smoke. But when I say I don't like sport, my friends derisively retort. You're not a man, you're not our friend, you're just a joke. Oh, volleyball and football leave me cold. And just watching little Rooney, I feel old. Fencing, boxing, tennis, cricket, well, you know where you can stick it. Would I try my hand at polo? Oh, my goodness gracious, no, no. Oh, I'm just a man who doesn't like his sport Though society dictates I really ought Though I did watch the Olympics That was just to ogle gym chicks But it bored me even quicker than I thought Oh, I'm just a man who doesn't like his sport And my soul is pure, it can't be sold or bought Oh, there's too much Sigmund Freudery So what? I like embroidery My handkerchiefs are beautifully wrought I'm just a man who doesn't like his sport Though I fight to gain acceptance, I'm distraught And a good old game of badminton Just leaves me feeling sadminton But my teardrops fall unnoticed on the court For I'm just a man who doesn't like his sport